Good morning, dear students. How are you today? Well, sir. Very good. So today we are going to start a very small but beautiful poem by the famous writer William Blake. The title of the poem is the Sick. The Sick Rose. This is actually the title of the poem. Now from the title of the poem you can understand that the rose is sick. Sick means not fine. It is actually metaphorical because rose cannot be sick. A flower cannot be sick. So the title is metaphorical. Before we start with the poem, let me give you a small introduction about the writer, William Blake. Blake was a very famous British writer who was born in 1757 and died in 1827. Can you correct the year of the birth of Blake? 1757? Yes. yes. 1757 actually was the Battle of Plassey. When uh, Lord Carson actually uh, Silasu Toto was defeated by Lord Clive is in their company. Okay. Now, Blake actually was a very famous writer known for his books like Songs of Innocence and Experience, The Book of Hell and other poems. Apart from being a writer, he was a painter. How many of you do painting? Can you please raise your name and? Yes, sir. What is your name? Sante. Thank you. Thank you for being a uh, painter. So, I think you must be knowing the names of Raphael and Michelangelo. Yes? Yes, yes. Yes. The Blake was also influenced by the paintings of Raphael and Michelangelo. Another important point about Blake was that he was a very pious and devout Christian. And because of that, in many of his poems, we can find biblical reference and allusions, like in his poems like the Lamb, the Tiger, and others. He was a visionary poet like Shelley, and he was a very romantic writer and a transitional poet. What do you mean by transitional poet? By transitional poet, we mean that he started writing during the second half of the 18th century. And pre-romantic because although he did not belong to the romantic age, but in his writings we can find the romantic charm and the romantic flavor. For example, compassion, love for nature, and all of this. Okay, with this small introduction, let me start with the poem, The Sick Rose. Before I start with the poem, another important point, uh, point please note it down. The poem was published in the book Songs of Innocence and Experience in the year 1789. Sometimes people call it 1794. So, in between 1789 and 1794, the poem was published. Let me read out the poem. O oh, rose, thou art sick, the invisible wall that flies in the night, in the howling storm. Has found out thy day of crimson joy, and his dark secret love does thy life destroy. Okay, I actually forgot to ask you one uh, basic question. I think all of you know what is a poem, right? Yes, yes. Very good. So, a poem, since the secret is a poem, let me tell you in brief what is a poem. A poem actually is a metrical composition. So it has a meter, rhythm, so it is a verse, right? Yes, it is actually has a meter. Now, we can look at the poem. Uh, let me just look at, uh, show you the poem. Yeah, you can see this is actually a painting by William Blake, a girl in a white dress. You know, a white dress is a symbol of peace and, uh, you know, innocence. Okay, this is actually the point. So, and 
you can see the poem, you will find you see that in eight line poem. And there are two standards. One standard we have four lines. So it is a two quatrain poem. Quatrain. Q U A T R A I N. Quatrain means four lines. And if you look at the poem, you can find, for example, war, storm, joy, destroy. So say last word of the second line rhymes with the last word of the fourth line. So the rhyme skip is A B C B. A B C B. This is actually. Oh rose, thou art sick. So the point is in addressing the rose. Oh rose. Oh means apostrophe. In Bengali there is a very famous song. Oh no dine ekti kontasunai. Oh no dine. Here the singer is addressing the river. Here also the poet is addressing the rose. Art is in capital. That is art is personified. The poet is saying that the rose is sick. That is the why the rose is sick? Because the invisible worm, W-O-R-M. Worm is and kind of insect. You know, if a flower is plagued or attacked by insect, it will become destroyed. So it has been plagued by an insect. And that is why it has lost its vitality. It is almost going to die. Okay, it is almost going to be destroyed. And the war of the blue eye, it is actually an art bound creature. Art bound creature. And it has a biblical significance. Now let me tell you what is this. All of you know that we are the, according to Christianity, we are the children of Adam and Eve, the first parents, and they were tempted by Satan in the form of a snake, and they ate the fruit of knowledge, and that is why God punished them by driving them from heaven up. All of you know about the biblical story. So here, the word is actually a biblical representation of the snake. That is Satan, S A T A N. And another important fact is that the last line of the first time, the howling storm, the, the word howling is actually very significant. It refers to the you know, turbulence, the destructive uh, you know, atmosphere. So it, it is something going to destroy the whole environment. As if the, the, the eating of the fruit of knowledge is going to be destructive. This has been suggested by the poet here. Then, in the second standard, then the poet is explaining that the earthbound creature that the worm has peeped into the big chamber of the lovers when they are making love. Now, crimson joy. See, I like this when crimson means red. Crimson joy, it has a double meaning. One meaning is that it is uh, the, because of eating the fruit of knowledge or because of committing the crime, the lovers are ashamed. And another important thing that they are actually raped because of the pleasure, sexual pleasure, the pleasure of love. It so it has a double meaning. And the world has performed the act secretly. That is what it is suggested. And it is not secret love does thy life destroy. Now, the poet is suggesting that the art bound creature, that is the world, has secretly built into the venture of the lovers and has performed this secret act, a secret act of destroying the beauty of the rose, that is, destroying the innocence of the lovers. The beauty in the rose actually is a metaphorical uh, meaning or metaphorical symbol of innocence. Okay? It is actually the, the, the metaphorical significance of destruction of the innocence. So it has a biblical religious significance. Now that's all about the poem. Now what is the message the poet is delivering to the poem? The poet is delivering a very beautiful message that whatever is tender Whatever is innocent, it has to be protected. Otherwise, it will be destroyed. Okay? So, your innocence 
needs to be protected, your virtue has to be protected. Or another important fact is that the poet is also suggesting that we must be careful of our virtue. And before I conclude, let me tell you one thing that the poet has a lot of influence in popular culture. For example, there was a song in in 1943 by Benjamin Britten. It was actually an influence that particular song by Benjamin Britten. And there is a critic, there is a writer called Nikhil Karpo who described the poem 